In this video, I will be sharing with you some information on the symptoms of adenoid cystic carcinoma. If you need information on the meaning of adenoid cystic carcinoma, the causes of adenoid cystic carcinoma, or how to treat adenoid cystic carcinoma, please check out the videos in our channel. So, let's get started. Adenoid cystic carcinoma is a malignant tumor with a deceptively benign histologic appearance characterized by indolent, locally invasive growth with high propensity for local recurrence and distant metastasis. The tumor is composed of basaloid cells with small, angulated, and hyperchromatic nuclei, and scant cytoplasm arranged into three prognostically significant patterns, cribriform, tubular, and solid. Some tumors undergo de-differentiation into a high-grade form. Numerous studies have attempted to elucidate accurate histologic prognostic features but have often yielded conflicting results. Microarray analysis and gene expression profiling have provided new potential diagnostic and prognostic markers. However, tumor grade, stage, lymph node metastasis, invasion of major nerves, and margin status remain the most consistent predictors of prognosis. The combination of surgery and postoperative radiation therapy has improved loco regional control of the disease. Despite this achievement, late local recurrence and distant metastasis rates remain high and may occur decades after initial diagnosis. Because adenoid cystic carcinoma generally begins to grow very slow, in many cases it can grow within an organ for several years and spread into surrounding tissue before it begins to exhibit any side effects such as pain, pressure or a lump. Also, upon reporting their initial symptoms to a physician, many patients have had their symptoms misdiagnosed as being a minor, more typical body issue, and this has continued over several years until such time that an MRI, CAT scan or biopsy is performed. This misdiagnosis has been reported by some adenoid cystic carcinoma patients to have taken place over 5 to 10 years from their first reported symptom. Another possible initial misdiagnosis for adenoid cystic carcinoma is that even when a needle biopsy is done on a suspect growth, a common misdiagnosis is that it is a benign, non-cancerous growth such as pleomorphic adenoma. Symptoms vary depending on the site and origin of the tumor. The symptoms are If the salivary glands are involved, there will be painless, slow-growing masses in the mouth or face. If the lacrimal glands are involved, there will be bulging of the eyes and changes in vision. If the trachea bronchial tree is involved, there will be respiratory symptoms, such as shortness of breath, dyspnea. If the larynx is affected, there will be changes in speech. Pain, numbness, and nerve paralysis may accompany advanced cancer because they can infiltrate and spread along nerves. To diagnose adenoid cystic carcinoma, your doctor will order a biopsy. A pathologist will evaluate the tumor cells microscopically. Imaging tests, such as MRI and CT scans, usually can identify recurrences of tumors. The standard treatment for adenoid cystic carcinoma is surgical removal of the cancerous tissue. The surgeon will remove the tumor and an area of tissue surrounding it. The presence of clean margins, meaning a tiny tissue is cancer-free surrounding the tumor, signals total tumor removal and gives the best chance that cancer will not recur at that site. Adenoid cystic carcinomas of the sinuses and skull base can be approached directly using the endoscopic endonasal approach. This state-of-the-art, minimally invasive approach allows surgeons to access the tumor through the natural corridor of the nose, without making an open incision. Surgeons then remove the adenoid cystic carcinoma through the nose and nasal cavities. Endoscopic endonasal approach offers the benefits of no incisions to heal, no disfigurement, and a faster recovery time. If you need complementary treatments, such as radiation, those therapies can begin soon after the endoscopic endonasal approach surgery. Surgery usually is followed by radiation therapy. Doctors may recommend neutron radiation therapy to treat adenoid cystic carcinoma. Compared with conventional radiation therapy, neutrons can deliver 20 to 100 times more energy along their path length, causing much greater damage to the cancer cells. Neutron radiation therapy has been tested on many different types of tumors, 
with salivary gland tumors showing the greatest benefit. In certain instances, it may be the treatment of choice for adenoid cystic carcinoma, particularly in areas of the body where it is difficult to perform surgery. Neutron therapy carries more severe side effects than conventional radiation therapy, such as severe sore mouth and or throat and difficulty swallowing. Therefore, neutron therapy is used more often in cases where the disease is inoperable or recurrent. For more information on this type of cancer, and all other cancer types, please visit www.ecancertips.com. Thanks for watching.